The subject of this video today is the iTube. The iTube is always a nice thing to look at on these antique radios. This one here, we've got a little bit of light coming through from the filament on the around the outside perimeter of it, so it's a little hard to see. And it isn't perfectly, uh, you know, a, a real good one, but it uh, shows uh, enough green that you can see that it is working. I can just tune it in here a little bit, and you can see. Okay, we're going to commence testing this tube. What I had built is an iTube tester using a socket to test these 6 pin, 6G5, 6U5 iTubes. I actually got it out of this old chassis which I scrapped. The iTube was here, an old RCA, and I used the socket and the wires. I used the socket and the wires and made it into this box. This box here was from something else, a piece of industrial equipment, so I just utilized the box and uh, the knob, everything, and the circuitry that's in here I designed uh, to operate the, uh, the um, iTube. I don't know if you can read that, but it's a 6U5, 6G5 right here. Now this is not the same tube. This is in this here, it's still there. I took it out of this radio because it was easier to get out. This one's real weak, but I'm going to show you how I test these things. I built this tester specifically for testing iTubes. This is very difficult. This particular iTube is extremely weak, but you can see the, uh, the uh, pie wedge at the bottom as I turn the bias control on my tester, you see how it's opening and closing, opening and closing. This is the control I'm varying right here. This is a fuse here. So as I'm varying this, it's changing the uh, bias on the grid of the 6G5 tube. Right now, I have the lights on in the room, and you really, really can't see this thing until I put it into the um, tester. Uh, I mean, when my hand's around the thing, you can see the wedge. I just happens to be on the right-hand side right here now. Um, this particular tube is extremely weak. This is a handy thing to check tubes when you're at a radio flea market or something, you want to test it. If you've got a place to plug this in, you could probably make this battery operated. Uh, you just need a way of generating the uh, target voltage. In this case, the target voltage is only 125 volts going on the uh, target of this tube. So therefore, um, it's not going to light as bright. But a brand new tube will show with the lights on in my shop quite well in here. So this will really kind of like give you a test, an idea. If you go to buy one of these tubes, take along a tester. You can make one up. Don't have to make it as fancy as I have done. Um, I'm going to show you the schematic of this. And so you may build your own. And if you want to make it all self-contained, it'll probably have to be a little larger than this so you can use batteries uh, to run the filament, which would be 6.3 volts, and the plate and target voltage which should be at least 120, 125 volts and the more yeah, voltage you have on the target the brighter the tube will be but you gotta remember that this particular tube is extremely weak and in the radio it's no brighter than what it shows on this here tester so this is just an indication because when you buy these tubes and you put them in a the tube tester the tube tester will show you the emission of the tube but that has nothing to do with the green phosphor. What happens is the green phosphor, after a while, is gone. It, 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 uh, it gets poor, and it doesn't give any more phosphorus green glow. 
So even though the tube weight tests good in a regular tube tester, it doesn't mean that the tube out front here is going to show a bright green. So a tester like this really is what you need to test to see if it lights green. Your tube tester, your average tube tester, will not put enough voltage on the target of the tube in order to show up the green. So therefore, I made one of these. So I'm going to show you the schematic right now, and if you want to build one, just put the video in pause and you can draw out the schematic. It's a hand-drawn schematic, so hopefully you'll be able to read it on YouTube. At this point, you may want to pause the video. I got two different kinds of schematics here. One's got a light blue background, the other one's a pure white background. You may pause the video to copy the schematic if you wish to. This is an inside view of the unit I built, and I hope you enjoyed this video.